In this video, we're going to talk about functions to explain more of the starter code and talk about control flow as a way to implement some of the behaviors in our programs. In the last program we completed, it had three properties of a software application. It took user input, it was interactive, and it represented and processed data. We're going to introduce functions, which are a type of control flow that will allow us to encode behaviors and rules. There are three control flow structures that are common to almost every single programming language. Those are functions, conditionals, and loops. Control flow allows us to execute code out of order, which means that you're not just executing code from the top line to the bottom line. It can happen in the order that you specify inside the control structure. Let's give a high level description of what a function is. A function is a subroutine, meaning that it's a group of code that executes when we say. The other sub-definition is as data. So the definition of the function itself can mean that it is a type of data. I'm going to start VS Code and open the folder that I just downloaded. Once VS Code is open, then I can drag this whole folder into the VS Code window. Now I'm going to open up the script.js file. We'll start by defining a function, which just means writing one out in the code, and we'll talk through the syntax. The first step to creating a function is to create a variable. And this variable is named after what the function does. My function is going to convert kilometers into miles. Then I define the function itself using the function keyword, parentheses, and a set of curly braces. The curly braces are what's called a block, which is the beginning and end of the function. These are all the lines that are going to execute when we call the function. So inside the function, I'm going to define a value that I'm going to convert. And then I'm going to make the conversion. And my function needs to output something. So I'm going to capture this conversion in a variable, and, and I'm going to use the return keyword to output this value. Now, I haven't used or mentioned this function inside the interactive portion of the starter code. But that doesn't matter. I can still interact with the function from the Chrome DevTools. Now let's see it in the browser. So remember to always save the file before we go to the browser. Now I'm going to open the DevTools and go to the console. If I begin typing in the name of my function, then I can see that the browser recognizes my function. If I hit enter, then I can see all the lines of code inside my function. What I want is to execute these lines of code, and I do that by adding a set of parentheses. So already Chrome is estimating what the output value is going to be. And if I hit enter, then I can see the actual output value. By output value, I mean this is a value that I can capture in another variable if I want. And if I enter in the variable itself, then I see that value is captured inside that variable. The next thing to talk about is that I won't always want to convert exactly six kilometers. I want to convert some dynamic number or some number that I determine at the time that I call the function. In order to do that, I can pass in a value when I call the function. And if I were to call the function right here, then that would look like this. I would pass in a number value between the parentheses. And this value would come out over here uh, at the function definition. So all I need to do is to define a parameter name uh, for this value. So now that I have this value, I can use it in the place of this specific six kilometer value. 
I'm going to replace it right here. And then I can get rid of line seven. So let's save this and try it in the browser. I'm going to get rid of this other example. Now in the browser, when I look at the definition of the function, it has my new code in it. And the way that I use this is that I give the parentheses, but I pass in a value. So now each time that I call the function, I can pass in the value that I want to convert. And what comes out is the converted value. So far, we haven't used our function inside the interactive part of our program. So next, I'm going to move the function execution into the interactive part, and we'll see it appear in the gray box. So what I'm going to do is replace the word hello world uh, with the execution of our function. So now I should see the result of this conversion inside the gray box. Let's save this and look at it, at it in the browser. Now when I hit the submit button, I should see the conversion in the gray box. Now we have the same problem as we had before, which is that no matter how many times I hit the submit button, I'm always converting five kilometers to miles. So what I actually want is for the user to be able to enter a number of kilometers, and that's the conversion that appears in the gray box. This is easy to do because input over here on line one is what the user types in. So I'm going to give this value uh, to the kilometers to mile function. This should make it so that whatever the user types in the input is the conversion they see in the gray box. Now I'm going to type a number in the input box. Let's start with the same number and I get the same output. If I put a different number, I get a different output. We now have all the pieces to talk more about the syntax of the starter code. On line one is the definition of a main function that gets called whenever the user clicks the submit button. The execution of this main function would look like this. But we're never going to write the execution of this main function. The browser is in charge of that, and it gets executed whenever the user clicks on the submit button. This code is in the index.html, uh, but we're not going to concern ourselves with it right now. The only thing to understand is that we need to define this function. The input parameter on line one is what the user has typed into the box, and the return value is what appears in the gray box. Let's review the function definition and execution syntax that we just saw. First, we're defining the function here inside this variable. And on line three, we're executing the function. We're giving it an input value here on line three. And this parameter called input gets transformed into input uh, kilometers over here inside the function. We're doing our conversion here on line 10. And we're using the input parameter and getting out a value. This value, we're return, using the return keyword to get this value back out of the function. It becomes my output value back in the main function. Now we're going to add some functionality onto our program. I'm going to create a function that does another conversion. This one is going to convert miles to feet. And we'll use it inside our main function. We'll do the conversion. And return the value. Now I'm going to use it inside the main function. We're going to take the output value of miles on line two, and we're going to turn that into feet, and that's going to be the final calculation. Now here I'm going to redefine my output value, and I'm going to call the function. 
and I'm going to pass in the converted number of miles that I have. Now let's save this and look at it in the browser. Now if I enter a number of kilometers, I get the number of feet. Another possible arrangement of this syntax is to take the execution of kilometers to miles and directly place it into the input parameter of miles to feet. That would look like this. I would get rid of the miles variable and take the execution of kilometers to miles and put it right here. So now you can see that I've replaced that variable with the whole function execution itself.